So let's have a look at some algebra. Now, again, guys, we are consolidating. So none of this should be new. If it is new, then you need to go watch the videos. Okay. So we've got an expression here. The example says, consider the following expression, and we have been given an expression. The expression is negative 6p cubed. Oh, it's been a day. Negative 6p cubed plus, and apparently now we're just going to select it, plus 3 minus q plus p minus r squared over 2. Now, that's a lot of information that we have there, but it's not impossible to work with. We just need to break down what we are dealing with. Now, most of the time, when we give you a question like this, whew, excuse me, we're going to ask you questions based on terminology. And so at the beginning of our algebra sections, we spoke about some important terms that we need to know. And this is where we're going to apply that knowledge. So the very first question is asking us how many terms there are in this expression. Now, remember, terms are the parts of the expression, it's like the words in the sentence that are separated by plus and minus signs. And remember, we only care about the plus and minus signs outside of brackets and fractions. So if we consider this, remember this negative in front of the 6p cubed belongs to that 6p cubed. So we've got the plus, the minus, the plus. That is separating my terms for me. And so what I see is that I've got four terms here. My first term is the minus 6p cubed. My second term is the 3. My third term is that negative q. My fourth term is then the fraction. So in this expression, I have got four terms. I can tell that because of the plus and minus signs separating my terms. The next question is then asking me what is the coefficient of q. Now, obviously, again, in order to answer this, we need to know what a coefficient is. So remember, the coefficient, oh, I'm trying to write it again, is the number that sits in front of the variable. It is being multiplied with the variable. Remember, a coefficient in a variable, there's the operation of multiplication between the two. And so if we go and have a look at our Q term, the number in front of it, remember there's that invisible one, is negative one. That is the coefficient to my variable Q. Remember, you need to keep the sign. If it is a negative in front of it, then you need to go and deal with a negative coefficient. Um, sorry, I've made an oopsie. I accidentally sent a mistake to you, Paul. Well, just ignore me. I was meant to go to everyone. There you go. Um, so our coefficient to Q is the number in front of Q. If we go up to our Q variable, which is term three, we can see that the number in front of it is negative one. Okay, very important that we keep the sign correct. If it is negative, it needs to be negative. Right, the next question is asking us what is a constant or what is the constant term? Now, again, if you don't know what a constant term is, you're stuck. A constant term is a term with no variables in it. It is just a number. So again, once we know what it is we're looking for, we go back up to our expression and we find the term that is just the number. That is term number two. Term number two is a positive three. You could write positive three, but remember there is an invisible plus sign in front of the three. So we don't have to put the plus sign there. But the constant term of this expression, the constant term is the one without a variable. And in this expression, it is three. Okay, so like I say, these sorts of questions are going to are going to test your knowledge of the words or the terminology we use in maths. So if you don't know what a term is, if you don't know what a constant is, you're not going to be able to answer these. And whilst there are only one mark questions, if you get three or four of them, that's five easy marks or three or four easy marks that you can get in your test or in your exam. Right, if we now move down to question D, which has apparently renamed itself question A, for whatever reason unknown to everyone. 
Question D is now telling us to determine the value of the fourth term, so of P minus R squared divided by two, if, now very importantly, what it's doing here, what I'm doing here is I'm giving you value. So I'm telling you R is equal to minus three, and I'm telling you that P is equal to one. What I am expecting you to do in a question like this is I am expecting you to take those values and substitute those va substitute those values into the expression in place of P and R. So in, in place of P, we're going to substitute positive one. And in place of R, we're going to substitute negative three. Cool. So whenever we give you values for variables, we are expecting you to go and substitute. So if we go and have a look at that, we have got P, I'm just gonna write this out a bit bigger, minus R squared divided by two. So P is one, and I always use brackets to substitute. Guys, this is really important because sometimes you might be multiplying, and if you don't use brackets, you forget to multiply. P is one minus r squared, so r is negative three, and that whole value of negative three is being squared, divided by two. Okay, so let's see what we get. One is just one. We're gonna leave the minus there for now because the first thing that we want to deal with here is the negative three squared. Now, again, if you don't know anything about exponents, you're gonna struggle here, and this is why it's important that we understand or we remember all of our sections in algebra combined. Negative three squared is saying negative three times negative three. So a negative times a negative is actually a positive, and three times three is nine. So I've got a plus nine, and then that is also being divided by two. Now, if we think about what happens when we've got a positive and a negative sign sitting next to each other, we know that that actually means I'm working with a minus. Remember, a minus and a plus being times together is a negative. And so I've got one minus nine divided by two. I'm just gonna carry on up here. If we simplify our numerator, one minus nine, now remember, think of your number line in order to do this. <clears throat> I'm not doing it all the way. If we're sitting at one and we subtract nine, we're going towards negative infinity. So one minus nine is minus or negative eight divided by two. Now a negative divided by a positive is a negative. Eight divided by two is four. So the value of that expression when I substitute in R and P is negative four. So it's very, very important when we substitute that we remember our brackets so that we remember the correct operations and we make sure that the signs are correct when substituting. Okay, so guys, this very first question is one that we often like to ask because we are able to test your knowledge of or your understanding of terminology in algebra. Right, so I'm gonna just wait there, take your screenshots. If you have any questions, now is the time to raise your hand. Otherwise you're taking screenshots and then we're gonna have a look at another example. Screenshots. Let's go my people. Tuto, you better come back. I'm watching you. My eye is on you. Mm. Good guys. Okay. So let's have a look at now starting to work with algebraic expressions and essentially start to simplify expressions. <clears throat> so in the second example, I'm asking us to add a whole bunch of expressions together. So let's just read what it says that we know what we're doing. It says add the following expressions. So what it's telling me to do is take this whole expression, add it, to this expression, add it to this expression. So basically what I can do here is I can set up a sum for myself. I have got 5x squared minus 3x cubed plus 2x plus, because I am adding x minus x squared 
plus, because again, I'm adding 2x cubed minus 5 minus 4x squared. Now I'm choosing to keep the brackets here just to remind myself that those are the three expressions I'm working with. But you're going to see now we can actually drop those brackets. Now the reason we can drop these brackets is because Remember, in front of any bracket when there's just a sign, whether it's positive or negative, we do have that invisible one. Okay, so technically, what we would want to do is we would want to distribute that positive one into our brackets. But remember, when I times anything by positive one, it doesn't change. X times positive one is still X. Three times positive one is still three. So nothing is actually changing by having that positive one being distributed into my brackets. And so what that means is I have got 5x squared, maybe let's write that a bit better, 5x squared minus 3x cubed plus 2x plus x minus x squared plus 2x cubed minus 5 minus 4x squared. So those brackets, whilst yes, we can keep them to remind ourselves that we're working with different expressions, they're not necessary when we add, right? But now the whole point is that we want to add and simplify this expression. So now what we want to do is we want to look for, and remember, this should be like something you're saying in your sleep at this point. We now want to look for like terms. We've written this definition down a million and one times, so we're going to make it a million and two. Like terms have the same variable or group of variables, so x, y, and x, y, or x squared, y, x squared, y, as well as the same exponent. So x and x squared are not like terms because one is x and one is x squared. The exponents are different. So what we want to do now with this expression is we want to look for our like terms. So what I want you guys to try for me is I want you to identify your like terms and add and subtract them in order to simplify this expression. So basically what I'm asking you to do is I'm asking you to find my final simplified answer for this expression. And the hint I'm giving you is find your like terms. Remember guys, if you want to use a highlighter or underline your like terms or whatever you need to do, do it. Just make sure you are identifying your like terms. Remember, as well, grade eight, when we add and subtract like terms, the exponents don't change. So the exponents will stay exactly the same. So if you add x and x, you don't get x squared, you just get 2x. So please remember your rules of adding and subtracting um, like terms when doing this. Because if we make silly mistakes, we're going to lose silly marks, and we don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to give you another minute or two. Remember, you put your answers in the chat so we can see how you're doing. I'm going to give you one more minute. Simplify those expressions.
Okay, remember guys, I'm not asking you for how many like terms. I want you to simplify it. So I want you to actually go and add and subtract your like terms here. Okay, you're not listening to me. I don't want how many like terms. I want you to simplify. One more minute, try again. I don't care that, well, I do care that there's four terms but I care more about those terms being simplified. Just for everyone to know that it's clear, I, you, I know that the, the quiz is already given to you. Please do not do the quiz without us finishing the class because the quiz mm. is based on what we are doing now and what we did on Monday, okay? So please, please, I beg of you. And just for your knowledge, four terms is wrong. So even if you were answering that question, which teachers M didn't ask, it's not four terms. Clearly it's not. So add the following expressions, guys. That's what we are doing at this moment. Okay, you've now had it said to you lots of times. We can't be any clearer about what we want. And if you don't understand, it means that you're not listening. And so that now becomes a you problem. As harsh as that sounds. Yeah, I think we can just continue uh, teaching, teacher Sam. Okay. For those who are following, it's okay. So, so guys, we want yeah. like terms, like Yulenda was saying. We don't, like, it's great. There's four like terms or five groups, whatever, cool. But you now need to take it a step further. So what we want to do is we want to collect our like terms. So the first type of term I see that I have here is terms with x squared in them. So I highlight all my terms with x squared. Got a negative x squared as well as a negative 4x squared. So that is one group of like terms. The next group of terms that I have going on here is now my terms with an x cubed in it. Those are two different groups. The exponents are different, two different groups. Another like term to that is in the 2x cubed. That's it, done. Now I move on to my next group of terms, which is now my terms with the just x in it. So there's a 2x and there's an x or a 1x. Remember, if you want to, you can put the one in front of the x if that makes it a bit easier for you to work with, by all means do that. Finally, We've got one last term, which is hopefully we remember a constant term because that is a term with no variable in it. And so I've got my four groups of terms. So like I said, it's great that we know that there's four groups of terms, but now we need to simplify. So now what I want to do is I want to add and subtract all of those terms. Remember I've said to you, if it makes it easier for you, write all of your like terms next to each other. Just remember to keep the sign correct. So this was a negative x squared. So I wrote it down as a negative x squared. This was a negative 4x squared. So I wrote it down as negative 4x squared. But it's absolutely fine to reorder. Then I have my minus 3x cubed plus 2x cubed. So the purple terms. Then I've got my blue terms plus 2x plus x. And finally, I have my constant term right at the end. So now I'm going to add and subtract those like terms. So if we start with the x squared terms, remember these were all of my green terms. Let's just highlight them again for ourselves. 5x squared minus 1x squared, remember that invisible one, is then 4x squared. 4x squared minus 4x squared. Anytime we subtract something from itself, whether it's three minus three or X minus X, we end up with zero, they cancel out. So all of these X squared terms actually fall away. They cancel each other out. So I don't have to write anything there. I've got no X squared terms. So I move on to my next group, the cubed terms. It would also help if I wrote this down as cubed. So these are my terms that we highlighted then in purple. We've got negative 3x cubed plus 2x cubed. Again, think of your number line. We're at negative 3. We're adding 2 on. So I end up at minus 1. 
x cubed. You don't have to put the one there. You can if you want. My next group of terms were the blue terms. So the terms with just x in them, 2x plus x. I have two x's. I add another x, so that gives me 3x. And then the constant term right at the end, it hasn't got anything to add to it or subtract from it. So it stays exactly the same, minus five. So we have simplified our answer to those terms, negative x cubed plus three x minus five. A reminder, grade eight, that when we add and subtract like terms, the exponents don't change. getting there. All right, so they don't change. Remember I said this to you on Monday. You're adding apples and apples, you want apples. You don't want apples squared or apples to the power seven. We want apples. So x cubed plus x cubed or minus three x cubed plus two x cubed needs to stay with x cubed. All right, so take your screenshots. If anyone has questions, raise your hand and ask. Otherwise, we're gonna have a look at another one. Uh, Mukona, you catch up on previous work by watching the videos either on the website or on YouTube. All of our previous lessons are there. Alrighty, guys, good. So we've got our screenshots. Let's have a look at the second one over here. So this is now where we need to read very carefully. And I know this is also sometimes what stumps us in maths. The second we start dealing with words, we get ourselves confused, but let's read it carefully. So it says from the expression 2a plus 3b minus 4c, subtract negative 2a plus 3c minus d. That's a lot. So let's just simplify this for ourselves for a second. Let's ignore the question for a minute. And let's say I had said from 10, subtract five. So someone, if you wanna raise your hand, what would I do? If, it say, if I told you from 10, subtract five, what would we do? Okay, we'll definitely need to subtract. You can type in the chat what your expression or what your sum would look like. What would your sum look like if I said from 10, subtract five? Good, grade eight, it's very nice. So we're going to subtract five from 10. So if we wrote this as a sum, we would say 10 minus five, and we would get our answer. We all know our answer is five, but that is what we would get. So now we want to take that and we want to apply it to this expression. So it said from 10, so from this first expression, subtract the second expression, all right? So now we can set this up algebraically to mean exactly that. So we're taking the from 2a, plus 3b minus 4c, and we are going to subtract minus 2a plus 3c minus d. That's what the instruction or what the question is asking me to do. Now that I've set that up, hopefully it becomes a little bit easier to see what I need to do. Firstly, I can see that I've got this negative sign in between my brackets, and hopefully we remember what that means is it's separating my terms. So I've got one term, two terms. It is also telling me that in front of the second bracket, I have got a coefficient of negative one. And that is very important to see because what that means I need to do is I need to take negative one and I need to distribute. So I need to multiply it to all of my terms inside the bracket here. 
Scenario, the first term is not equal to 10. That was just an example to help us simplify what was going on. Okay, so this is a completely separate example. It was just to help us understand the language. Uh, thank you, Lisa. I can see my mistake. Sorry, guys. I wrote down minus 4a instead of minus 4c in the first bracket. Thank you. Okay, so just to repeat, we are taking the first bracket and we are subtract, subtracting, subtracting the second bracket. When I set it up, I can see that I need to distribute a negative one into my second bracket. So let's go. The first bracket, nothing's happening there. I've got no like terms in the bracket, I'm not distributing anything. So I can just write out these terms without the bracket around them because the bracket isn't doing anything for me at this point. But in my second term, I need to distribute. So negative one times negative two A is positive two A. Negative times a negative is a positive. Negative one times positive three C, negative times a positive is a negative three C. And a negative one times negative D is positive D. So I have distributed and I have got my terms. This is now again where we need to go and identify our like terms for ourselves. So we grab a highlighter and we start identifying our like terms. So I've got an A term, 2A and another A term, 2A. I then have my B term. So I've got a plus 3B and that's it. I've got no more B terms. I have my C terms. So if I go and have a look at my C terms, I have got minus 4C and minus 3C. And then I've got my D terms. I've only got one plus D. So I can see I've got my different groups of terms here. Now, guys, what we try and do is we try and put them alphabetically. It's not the end of the world if you don't. But we're going to group our A terms first. So 2A plus 2A. Then we've got our B term, which is just the plus 3B. Then we've got our C terms, which is minus 4C, minus 3C. And then we have our D term right at the end. Okay, so again, all I'm doing in this step is I'm rearranging my expression so that all of my like terms are sitting next to each other. So you can see I'm highlighting my like terms here for myself. I am just grouping them together so that when I add and subtract, I'm double double checking myself and making sure I'm adding or subtracting the correct values. So now we simplify. 2a plus 2a is 4a. Remember the exponent doesn't change when we add or subtract. The 3b is just gonna stay 3b because there's no like term to it. Minus 4c, so we're already at negative four on our number line and we wanna take away another three, gives us negative seven c. And again, with the D, there's no like term to it, so it just stays plus D. So we have simplified our expression according to the instruction of subtracting the two. And very importantly, we made sure that we grouped our like terms and we added and subtracted. Right, so again, guys, take your screenshots. If anyone has any questions, now's the time to raise your hand. I'm also going to give you just a two minute stretch break, yawn break, whatever break that you need. We're not going to have a full on brain break, but I'm going to give you two minutes and then we're going to move on. While you're stretching, no pretender, do you have a question? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I wanted to ask that is it a must to put them in order in like when A, B, and C? No, you don't have to. So Siam Tanda, in, in response to your question too, there on the chat, like Noko Tenders just said, it doesn't have to be A, B, C, D. So if you said 4A minus 7C plus 3B plus D, absolutely fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, so guys, the reason I often say put it in alphabetical order is because it does make life a little bit easier when finding like terms, but honestly, if your final answer is not alphabetical, it's fine. We're not going to mark you down for it unless the question specifically told you to put it in alphabetical order, but no, it's okay. 
Right, I hope we've all stretched, touched your toes, touched your nose, whoopsie daisies. Uh, sorry. And we're gonna have a look now at our next example. You guys are doing really nicely. I'm gonna give you one more minute just to have a stretch. Oh. Mm. Okay. Right, guys, let's have a look. So what I want is I want you guys to try this first one by yourselves. So you're going to put your answers in the chat. I want you to try this first expression or simplifying this first expression by yourself. There's no distribution. There's no fraction. So it's nice and easy. All you need to do is add or subtract your like terms so like terms is going to be super important here so i want you to try it put your answers in the chat and we'll see how you do okay we've done a lot of identifying like terms tonight so give it a try mm. i had a suggestion paul you're writing tomorrow and you're writing that and you look like you have a crying face do you want to raise yeah. your hand so you can explain to us how can we tackle this question? I know I'm putting you at the spot, but that's how you're going to learn. And that's how you're going to know that you are ready for tomorrow's test. Do you wanna get that done for us, Paul? We're giving you an opportunity for you to learn and understand the work. We'll be here, Teacher Sam and I will be helping you. We'll be helping other students also. So it's up to you. It's not a force, it's just a request so that you can actually feel relief that you know this stuff okay i'll suggest that so please pow raise your hand and that's good for you but please do try this question also okay remember guys you are trying this question on your books and then when you have answers please put them on the chat but pow that's how you can get out of your anxiety so you must raise your hand and teacher sam and i can help you because you are writing tomorrow you need to be the one understanding this work today. Okay, so this lesson for you, you need to be able to listen attentively and listen to understand. Okay, Tedda, do you wanna try? We can also take you, do you wanna try? We'll be here to help you. You just need to tell us and direct us what Teacher Sam has been teaching us. And then when you get stuck, I am here to jump in and to help you. And Teacher Sam is here also. So please don't feel nervous to raise your hand. That's how you can learn, my people. It's a good opportunity. I swear I'm not putting you to the spot. It's a good one. <laughs> Come on, guys. Mubuya already want to gave raise their hand. Yeah, Mubuya already gave in some answers. Those that are writing, I'm requesting for you to actually raise your hand for now. If not, that opportunity will be given to those who are already done and I can see their answers. Okay, you see? I think it was <laughs> Zuna, wasn't it? Zuna, are you also writing? Or Zuna, you're not one of those people that are writing? Let me see here quickly. Okay, I see any of you still wants to put your answers in the chat before we do corrections? We're just giving you uh, one minute or two minutes. What do you say, Teacher Sam? Is that fine? Uh, yeah, I reckon one more minute. Okay. You got it, guys. You got so this, many my examples people. like this. Who says they're writing tomorrow? Zuna. Okay, Zuna is also writing tomorrow. Then Zuna will be the one to take us through this one. Nice. Excited. Yeah. Zuna, we are here to help you. Okay, I see that majority have put in their answers. Nice, yeah, guys. I'm ready. Yeah. Is it fine, teacher Sammy, if I can yeah. take Zuna? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. Zuna, let's go. Show your skills so we can correct or we can upload and then tomorrow you'll be ready. I have <laughs> unmuted you, Zuna. Do you want to talk? I'm going to unmute again and try to unmute again. 
you know there should be a pop up screen there on your on your device so, there we go there we go each network hi zuna i hope oh. i'm pronouncing it nicely you there Ish. this network is so jealous of you zuna <laughs> i'm so sorry is anyone else writing tomorrow who would like to help zuna out zuna sorry it's not it we do want you to talk but i think your network is just a problem but hopefully you can hear us I feel like the weather's causing chaos as well okay so mbali if you are writing tomorrow raise your hand okay uh mivuyo mivuyo also is writing we can help hi guys um okay Okay, Mbali is writing on Monday. Okay, Mivuyo is here. Okay, Mivuyo, I'm gonna take you. Guys, Butali, I see you. Andile, I see you. Sindisi, it's not like I didn't see you guys. Okay, we appreciate you. But let's see the people that are writing tomorrow so that they can be ready. Take us through Mivuyo. You are the teacher now. Let's go. What has <laughs> been teacher Sam? She's been teaching you guys. Let's see. What did you learn? What, do, what should we do? What's the first step? Evening, ma'am. Evening. Evening. Um, the first step is to group the like terms. Good. And the first like terms is 5x to the power 3. And, yeah. the, and the second one is negative, negative 2x to the power 3. Good. And the third one is positive 3x to positive x squared. Yeah, 3x squared. Um, the, another one is negative 8x squared. Excellent. And the last two ones are the positive 7x and negative 7x. Good. So now what do we do? Now we, we say 5x to the power 3 minus 2x to the power 3 mm -hmm. plus 3x squared minus 8x squared good plus 7x minus 6 good um 5 minus 2 it's 3 good x cubed and the exponents stay the same Good, well done. Um, positive three squared minus eight x squared. It's negative five x squared. Good, guys, be careful. It's negative five x squared. Good, Mavuel, keep going. Um, seven minus six, it's one. Then it's it's a positive one x or x. Good or x excellent so guys you can write one x or like Mubuyo just said we could just write x but Mubuyo has beautifully explained how we wow. simplify this expression i am so proud teacher sam it means that actually they are listening i'm so happy well, at least some guys. class i teach actually listens yeah. to me yes <laughs> it means that they listen and they do understand well done Mubuyo. the steps that Mubuyo gave is exactly yeah. the step that teacher Sam was giving to us, guys. So uh, you guys are doing really well. I mean, we are all the best with your exam. I'm sure you're gonna nail it. I can't wait to see your, your results, really. <laughs> I'm so impressed, guys. Well done. Well but done. But seriously, Marcus. well done, guys. Like, like I say, at least some class I teach actually listens to me. Exactly, this is a proof. <laughs> <laughs> it's a proof that teacher Sam and I were good teachers. Well done, Mubuya. Thank yeah, you. you have made me feel a lot better about my abilities as a teacher because I was <laughs> doubting a lot today. Nice, guys. Guys, well done. Okay, so I hope you all got that. I hope you've all screenshotted that. If you haven't, what time are we at? Mm, have we got time for one more? Yeah, I reckon you guys can try this one. Nice. Okay, screenshot, screenshots. You can see question B. You're going to try it. Right, so I'm going to give you two minutes. Um, 
the only hint I'm going to give you is remember, if you can't do anything in this fraction, you can always separate the fraction. So it means that you can take each of the terms in your numerator and write it over two and separate in order to simplify. So let's see what you come up with. If you don't finish in those two minutes, that's fine. But I want you to try. Um, and then we'll have a look at some answers in, like I say, two minutes time. And then, yeah, you guys have done really, really nicely tonight. Like I say, made me feel much better about my abilities as a teacher. I can tell you that for free. Mm. Yes, my people. Let's that do it. Tough. Anyone who's writing again, anyone who's writing tomorrow, the rest of us, we are all working, right? We want those people that are writing tomorrow to raise their hand. You won't have time to actually explain much. So you better actually also work it out, but raise your hand so you can just, Nelson, I hope you're writing tomorrow. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Write it on your book because you're only going to tell us what, how did you find your answer like real quick? Okay, because we won't have time. We have like one minute left and then we can leave the class. Okay, <laughs> y'all did really, really well, my people. Yeah, you did outstanding. Really well. Yeah. Okay, I see that most of you have already done, well, not most of you, but I guess you are actually done writing on your book and now is a matter of you typing the answer. So we are good to go. Nelson, I'm good to Sam. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, let's hear it. And meet him. Okay. Okay, Nelson, are you ready? We're going to help you through. Let's go. Hello, ma'am. Hi. 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 So I first took the, the two in the bottom and divided divided them by the the numerators. Okay. Mm. okay. I said two divided by two gave me one. Good. Good. And then I added the A, the A square. Good, good. Then next I say two divided by six gave me three. Then I added the A cube. Then I say positive four divided by two gave me a positive two. Excellent, excellent. Well done. Well done. And that's all. And that's all. Yeah. Exactly, that's guys. That's it. Guys, that's it. Oh, I, just don't, I hate hearing my voice. Um, that's it, guys. We've got no like terms. That's all we can do. The only thing that might look different is you might not have put the one in front of the a squared, but that is our simplified expression. Nelson, amazing. Well done.